Good evening. Welcome to Back to School Night. Uh, my name is Daniel Alpert. This year I teach AP Consult, Algebra 2 Trig Intensified, BC Calc, and Senior Project. I apologize I'm not available to um, be there for Back to School Night, but uh, in this video you'll find the information on all four classes that I teach. Uh, so whichever one you're here for, you can Fast forward ahead to that spot in the video, I will go in this order so you know where to look for. Uh, and I put them all in one video so that it would be simpler for the links to get sent out and we make sure there would be no mistakes. But you can just fast forward ahead to the spot in the video which you want to see. Right. AP Consult is essentially a study hall. Um, it's a it's a guided study hall. I'm here. My job is to help everybody in the class with basically whatever they need. I'm a math teacher, so I'm the hopefully the first person they're going to turn to for help with math. I can help with other subjects, um, or we can figure out the best way to get help for anything that I can't do. Um, the help that students are getting in AP Consult does not have to only be for AP classes. They can get help in any of their subjects. The point of the class is just taking an AP class often adds a lot of work time for students and their lives are busy and this gives them a chunk of time every other day where they can get work done. There are not a lot of requirements. Uh, this is a picture of the Canvas page that all students can get to. Uh, all that they're going to need to do for me every day is go to this class notebook link and fill out an accountability form. That looks like this. Uh, there's going to be one up for each quarter. It's through Microsoft OneNote, which is a program all students have on their MacBooks, and it allows them to uh, update a notebook that we share. So they're just going to fill out this form, tell me what they've done that day, and um, I'll be able to see it and monitor how everyone's doing. And most importantly, I'll be able to keep track of any help that they need from me. Um, of course, they're in the classroom also, so they can also just you know, raise their hand or come up to the desk and ask for help. The, the grading for this class is pass-fail. Um, there's no assignments. Um, there's no nothing that I'm going to grade. So um, really, un unless there are unexpected problems uh, in the class time itself, um, everyone should get up pass for this grade. Um, there's no, no numeric or letter grades that go with it. Uh, if you have any questions about how I can help, please feel free to email me. Um, other than that, there is not a lot of information for this class. Um, so please enjoy the rest of your back to school night and let me know if you have any questions. Algebra 2 Trig Intensified. I teach this class 2nd, 4th, and 7th periods. So you can check your schedules, um, your, your ch children's schedules, just to make sure that you have the right link to the right class. Um, let me start by saying that this is a terrific course, um, having nothing to do with me. It's just a great, it's a great curriculum. Um, it's for a lot of students, it's the first time they're really interested in, in seeing what math can do. The, the level of difficulty is a huge step up from what they're used to before, even in normal years, um, and you know, especially this year coming out of what for a lot of students was academically lighter um, during the pandemic, even if um, socially, emotionally, um, it was harder. And so this, this class is just a great entry to, to upper level math. Um, it's tied together in a way that things make sense, and, and I, I really, really enjoy teaching it. I, I've been doing it for... I don't know, 13 years now, and I just, I'm not going to let it go. Um, so I'm, I'm, I really enjoy teaching this class. Uh, what you see on the screen is a picture of the student's view on Canvas. There's not a lot going on here because I try to keep it as simple as possible. Basically, everything they're going to need is going to be in this one link here, notes, links, and assignments. This is where to go for every assignment. Um, that needs to be turned in on Canvas. Every link to, a, to video notes and all of the videos that I post after class with you know um, 
recorded versions of what we did in class and also the PDF version of the, the notes that went on the blackboard that day. Everything is all in this one place. This is what it looks like. It's a calendar. Um, we add a row every day. I think this doesn't go that far right now, but um, every day I, I add another another row on the bottom of this. So you can always jump to the bottom and just see what the most recent lesson was. You Through your access to Canvas, you can see this screen also. You can see what's, um, you know, what's been assigned each day. Um, you know, you can ask about the topics in this column, the summary cards, um, which, you know, I've been talking about the students about this week and will continue into next week. But you can just ask about these topics. You know, if you, if you don't get a lot out of your children when you say, what did you learn in math today? You can kind of ask them if they can talk to you about these topics, whatever's in this column. And you know, that'll be a good way to, to check and make sure that they kind of are following along with what we're doing in class. Uh, everything else is going to be in this assignments page. Um, everything gets turned in through Canvas, and so this is where they're going to go to submit the, the pictures of their work. All of the details are in here. Um, the po uh, page numbers and problem numbers from the book, the links to PDFs of all of the handouts that we do, all of that, it's all, all in that assignment sheet. I don't ask a lot in terms of materials. Um, everybody needs to have a binder. Um, binders work a lot better than notebooks. There are just a lot of handouts that go with this course. And so having being able to put the handouts and the class notes and like everything in the right order, the chronological order, and not having notes in one place and a folder for handouts somewhere else where, where things don't really make sense, the binder makes a big, big difference. Um, all students need one package of index cards and an index card holder. Um, what we do is we make summary cards. I, I, you know, I, I spoke to the students about this last week explaining the, the logic behind it. Uh, the summary cards is something that students are expected to do after each class um, later in that day. So that evening, they are supposed to just exactly what it says, summarize uh, what we learned that day on a card. The idea is, you know, it's based on some, you know, thinking in, in psychology and how the brain works. The idea is to help convert short-term memory to long-term memory before they forget what we talked about that day, actively and analyzing it and synthesizing it into a summary helps keep it stored long-term, which just helps them you know, use it as we move through the class. Um, we need graph paper in here because we just talk about graphs all the time, and so that comes up. Um, so that we should be using that instead of regular lined paper. Colored pencils, I say this every year, I'm not often listened to, but colored pencils are really helpful. Um, so, you know, I told all my students that they're great. Um, if, if they bring them in, that's fantastic. This empty line here is where I used to say students needed a TI-83 or 84 plus calculator. Uh, I've stopped saying that. I've stopped requiring that. It costs $120 and we graph better using the free version, the free graphing software online. It's called Desmos. It's a fantastic online grapher. So I do not require students to use the graphing calculator. It does come up in later courses. They will need it. And so buying one now isn't a terrible idea if you know that your child is going to be taking, you know, pre-calculus and calculus and statistics over the next few years. But for this class, it's not necessary. So I, I took that off the list. The other questions that always come up on Back to School Night are about grading. Um, and this is not interesting or different. This is the required grading scale and average um, calculation system that all teachers have to use. I will just let you know I do give a final exam. And so all four quarters and the final exam each count for one-fifth of the grade. Within each quarter, the grading, I'm doing it a little bit differently this year from what I've done in the past. I am de-emphasizing unit tests. Um, last year, I, I really didn't do them every unit um, just because of the nature of remote learning. And I found that for a lot of students, that was helping to reduce stress and it really wasn't getting in the way of learning. And so we're going to, me and the other teacher who teaches this course, we're going to try and figure out other ways to do assessments that don't involve um, classroom testing 
our plan is to do one test per quarter. Um, and because everything is in flux a little bit, I'm not starting the year with a set category weight where each type of assignment um, counts for a certain percentage of the quarter grade. I'm going to be doing it by points, and we'll we'll see how the, the percentages end up. Um, the goal is to, to not maximize um, testing, but to include both tests and other assessments and quizzes to be the bulk of the classroom grade. I'm sorry, I forgot to conclude. Um, <laughs> sorry, I forgot to conclude the Intensified Algebra 2. Um, I'm happy to answer more questions. I know I'm sure you have a lot more that I, that I didn't get to in this short video. Um, please feel free to email me. Let me know what I can help out with. And enjoy the rest of your evening, and have a good night. BC Calculus. This is the best course in the entire school. Um, if any of you have children in my Intensified Algebra 2 course and you heard me say how great of a course it was, it's not a lie. It's just that this one is so much better. I love teaching this course. I really do. It is, it is the material, um, the students that are in the course, it's just, it, it combines to be such a great, great experience. Um, I'm going to run through a little bit about how you can keep up to date and how students can keep up to, um, you know, up to date on what's going on in the class, make sure we don't fall behind. So this is what the Canvas page looks like. I try to keep it very simple. Um, everything comes through this link here. Under course documents, you can find a syllabus, you can find um, a digital copy of the textbook. Later in the year, there'll be review materials up there. That all is under course documents, but the, the daily place to go is notes, links, and assignments. That is a calendar, which I update after every class, um, which will have every assignment that we do goes in this category. So the homework for each day, these links will take you to the Canvas assignment, which is where everything gets submitted. Um, of course, all worksheets or anything like that are all linked in, within this assignment. Um, in this column, the notes, I put both PDF versions of whatever goes on the board that day. It gets saved and put online. And also, for, for a lot of lessons, um, there are video recordings, which are separately recorded versions of what we do in class. I don't record our class time, um, but I do record a, a version of the notes um, separately, and that gets posted here. So when students are absent or if they just kind of need to hear something again, um, this is a great place to turn to see everything. Um, the video notes that are linked in here, they're also linked in the assignments, but one of the types of assignments we'll have very frequently are video notes to to prepare for the upcoming class. The, the, I, the logic behind the video notes is students will kind of understand what we're doing better if they've gotten a hint of it already. And so the video notes are meant to be short, like 15 minutes or so um, prep for the, the coming lesson. Just to talk about grading a little bit, even though I try to de-emphasize the importance of grading, um, throughout the class. One of the reasons for that is students who are able to keep up with what we're learning in class um, are, they're already working at a high level and they're achieving at a high level. And so I take that into account with my grading for this class. And so um, I, I try to allay fears throughout the year that gr grades are generally pretty good in this class. Um, I do typically in most years give a final exam in this course right before the AP exam. Um, I have plans to do it this year, of course. I certainly have to be a little bit flexible with what might happen over the course of this year, so who knows, but the plan is for there to be a final exam and then each of the four quarters counts for 20% of the grade. That fourth quarter grade is, is mostly a project that we do after the AP exam. In terms of category weights, I, I don't go in with a prefixed 
60% tests, 20% homework. I, I give every assignment a point value as we go, and it usually works out to be about 50 to 60% on the tests. Um, this year, however, I am planning on de-emphasizing testing a little bit, shifting from a full test every unit to once every quarter. Uh, this was something I discovered last year as, as we did a little bit less formal assessing as in the remote context that we had to deal with. I found that students were less stressed without the, daily, without the every unit tests and their learning didn't go down um, you know, in terms of AP scores, which is you know a neutral way to measure achievement. Last year's scores were just as high as any other year. So um, I, I, I'm trying to pull back on testing a little bit. So all that is just to say that grading categories are a little bit in flux. Um, that's all I have planned to speak about for BC Calc today. Um, if you have more questions, I'm of course happy to, to answer them. I know that a video is not the same as a live in-person meeting, so please feel free to let me know anything I didn't get to that you're curious about. Um, and have a very good evening and enjoy the rest of your night. Senior project is interesting. Um, senior project is the one class um, every year where, where the parents come in and they just have a lot of questions because um, unless you, you know, have had students that already came through the process, it's it's a brand new idea. You know, most of us didn't didn't have something like this when we were in high school. So um, I'll try to answer a few of the common questions and, and hopefully that'll that'll help a little bit. And of course, afterwards, I'm happy to answer any more questions you have via email. Uh, what is senior project is, is usually the first question that, that gets asked. Uh, senior project is a unique self-designed um, year-long course that the students get to make for themselves. Um, the goal of senior project is for students to um, expand their horizons and try new things while at the same time honing some of their academic skills and getting a glimpse of what life in the you know, real world is going to be like. Um, I'm going to say a few things that Senior Project is not, or does not have to be. Uh, senior Project does not have to be a massive undertaking. You know, students don't need to write a novel or produce a movie or make a robot. These are very grand things, and Senior Project is not really intended to be that. There are some students who do very big things for their projects, but most do not. Um, so the next question on there, is senior project a lot of work? The answer is no. Um, just in terms of, of bare hours you know, spent on class, uh, it's, it's less than most other academic classes. Um, part of the reason why senior project often feels harder is students that, um, d that don't chart out their year in advance, um, often find themselves catching up towards the end of the year. Um, and there are only a few deadlines throughout the year, mostly at the very end. And so students often find themselves scrambling near a deadline. And so it feels pressured. But throughout the course of the year, um, senior project really should be looked at not as a very, you know, time consuming, hard, all encompassing, take over your life kind of course, um, because it's really the numbers just don't back that up. Um, another question that gets asked a lot um, at Back to School Night about Senior Project is about off-campus privileges. And so uh, the answer is yes, students can go off-campus during Senior Project. It won't happen for several more weeks, usually not until about the end of the first quarter. Um, students should have gotten a form about going about off-campus privileges already. Um, it wasn't through me, but I have more forms if any students need them. Um, because I teach this class six period at the end of the day, um, students will be allowed to come to me um, either right before six period or um, if they have you know, C lunch, they can come to me before C lunch. Just sign out, let me know that they were 
present in the building for the day, and then they can leave the building. Um, the reason we do that is for students to have the opportunity to to do things outside. Um, you know, a lot of students spend time with professionals doing job shadowing or, or internships or um, volunteer work or working out in a gym. These are just examples of things students have done for me in the past. And so having that extra hour and a half during the day to kind of get over to, to places they need to be, like that, that helps a lot. So um, students will be allowed to do that in the coming months. Uh, the next section on that page, this is those, those four words in there. This is some terminology that gets thrown around for senior project. And it's obviously they're, they're all basic English words, but they mean very specific things in senior project. And these are the, the words that your students are hearing about right now. So I just wanted to, to let you know what some of these words meant so you can kind of use them in, in conversations with, with uh, senior project students. The senior project is built around five objectives. An objective is a goal that a student sets out um, that a student designs on their own um, based on a, some sort of linked topic. So for example, if a student wants to do a senior project about um, photography, one objective might be to create a, in a photo exhibit with you know six or seven of their own photos. Um, Another objective might be to explore the photography of, um, you know, a famous artist by, in, you know, they could go to museums and read books and, and all of that for that objective. Um, right now in our class, students are sort of nailing down those five objectives. So I really encourage you to, to ask your children about their objectives and, and see if they need help coming up with, with five, five different goals. Um, the objectives drive the whole project. So, so designing them well in the beginning makes for a successful senior project. It, it does go a long way. The next term on there is methods. Each of those objectives gets broken down into several components, and those components are what we call the methods. Uh, for example, if someone's objective is to gain career experience in um, their field, let's, let's say they're doing a senior project on architecture, and one of their objectives is to, to gain uh, career experience in architecture, um, they would hopefully be able to job shadow an architect um, for a little bit, and that, that would all be part of their objective. The methods, they would, they, the goal is to break down that process into all of the, middle, the minute little steps, um, like contacting architecture firms um, and asking if they have, you know, uh, uh, job shadowing programs, or um, you know, emailing with an architect that they know, a family friend, to you know set up appointments where they can interview them. These are all examples of methods. They're they're small little components of objectives. Once we have the five objectives, we will break them down into components and sort of make a list, which essentially becomes a checklist for the year. All of those methods, this is a checklist, um, you know, that students will, will, will keep those in mind and we have, you know, a written copy of them uh, in their journals that will, you know, they'll, they'll follow throughout the year. It, the, those methods become, um, you know, the guide so you can always look back at those methods and see like, all right, what do I need to be doing right now? Let me, let me check my methods and I'll see what, what have I written down on this list, on this to-do list and it'll, it'll um, help guide their daily actions. The next term on there is a consultant. One of the requirements of senior project is to have a professional, con sorry, I shouldn't say professional, it doesn't have to be professional, a consultant, an adult consultant in their field. Um, it can be, it can't be a relative, but it can be a family friend. Um, it can be someone that they get connected with through school. Um, who is connected in some way to the overall topic of their senior project. It does not have to be exactly what their focus is on. Uh, for example, if somebody was doing a um, senior project about teaching, learning to be a teacher, um, 
you know, they, and they wanted to focus on, they want to be an elementary school teacher. And so they're doing a project based on all sorts of things related to that. Their consultant can be um, a high school teacher. You know, it can be, it, it doesn't have to be someone who's exactly, exactly what their um, project is about. The idea is just to make a connection with an adult um, in, in the field. This consultant um, will be a part of the panel that watches the final presentation in the end. And so, and it will actually be a part of the grading process also. So it's really useful to find a consultant that um, you can sort of develop a relationship with because then in the end they become an advocate for you, um, helping to make sure that you are, you are graded as highly as you deserve. Uh, the next term on there is research, which of course, we all know what research means, but research in the context of senior project um, sometimes gets a little bit confusing. Um, one of the five objectives that students have to create has to be what we call a research objective. The research objective can be um, anything related to their topic. It doesn't have to be exactly what all of the other objectives are about. Uh, for example, um, if a student is doing a senior project on um, sports medicine. They could decide to research something very specific within that field. So they could, you know, research um, a few, maybe research the, the origins of Tommy John surgery, which is really, really specific. And the rest of their project might not be about Tommy John surgery, but it's related to sports medicine. And so um, you know, that's an example of a, of a research topic. What they'll do is, and with the help of, of me and the librarians, um, they will use a series, you know, find academic sources, meaning books, articles, um, journal entries, um, documentary films, interviews, lots and lots of ways they can do research. Um, but they'll will find several ways and um, essentially um, write about a three or four page paper on their topic, on that, that one um, small little subtopic of their overall project. That's the research component of the senior project. Um, the last question I have on here, uh, what should my child be doing now for senior project? It varies a little because um, we'll always, throughout the year we're always going to have students at different phases of their project at any given time. Um, and that has already even started now. Some students got started very quickly right off the gun. Others are having trouble coming up with ideas. Um, so right now, what we should be doing is finishing getting those objectives written and approved. All students have access to the project approval form. It's on our Canvas site. And um, that, that's what we should be doing right now. So if you, if you wanna help out and talk to your child about senior project, the question to ask is, what are your objectives? Or can I help you, you know, come up with some good objectives to, to make your senior project? Um, you know, that, that's where we are right now. I, I know this couldn't possibly have answered all of your questions, so please do reach out to me, email me. Um, go back to the original screen, which has my email address. Please feel free to contact me. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. I really do enjoy teaching senior project because it's it's a chance for both me to get out of my math bubble you know and, and do some other things with students that aren't always about math um, and also it's 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 fun to watch the students you know kind of broaden their horizons do things that they they didn't realize they could be a part of school before um, and so it's it really is a fun class to teach I hope you found this useful. Um, I hope you have enjoyed Back to School Night so far. I know you've got one more class to check out. Um, and I hope you have a very good night.